It's rare for me to DNF books, or otherwise abandon them before I've finished them. On average, I probably don't DNF more than one or two books out of hundreds, while for other readers, this is higher. Still, even open-minded as I am, I do DNF, and I have my own reasons for why. While most books can engage me, there are a handful which, beyond being boring, don't hold my attention. And I've identified what will make me lose interest in a narrative. Whether it's the writing, the characters, or a disappointing plot twist, I have several reasons I'll abandon a novel. I've been reading voraciously since I was little, and I'm especially passionate about fantasy. But the complaints I have go beyond genre, or even the talent of the writer, or the quality of their writing. I have DNF'd books that others have loved, because of specifics that I look for in a book, and personal tastes, though writing quality can play a role. And in this video, I will outline five things that will make me abandon a novel. The first, and possibly biggest problem I have, is a lack of connection with the characters. As a reader, I prioritize character-driven stories. This isn't to say I don't appreciate a well-crafted plot filled with clever twists and turns, but I need to care about the people I'm reading about. Beyond characters which are well fleshed out, with specific personality traits, flaws, interests, and hobbies, I like to feel close to the characters. What I mean by this is that I want access to their inner thoughts and feelings. Even in a story with a rich plot, I want to know what characters are thinking and experiencing. I want to react with them and know their emotions, ranging from their anger to their relief. I want glimpses of their backstories and how they'll shape who they are now and how they respond to situations. While I love first-person stories because of the closeness they provide, and the often ongoing inner monologue readers are privy to, plenty of third-person stories excel in this too, to the point where I'll forget if the story is first-person or not. Other readers are particular about what style they'll read in, but I don't care if a story is one or the other, provided it lets me see into their characters. Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight books are third-person narratives with intricate plots and plenty of action, but I love them because of the attention which is paid to the characters, not only in seeing how they act, but in seeing who they are and how they feel internally as they work through their traumas and flaws. There's such an emphasis in these novels on facing your past, and all of the heroes have to grapple with their pasts, questioning who they are, if they can change, and if they need to change. Conversely, a book I struggled with was Mr. Norrell and Jonathan Strange. Now, in fairness to the book, deep character work probably wasn't the point of the narrative, and not every book is going to be for every reader. But this was a book I expected to love, just based on its setting and the concepts it was dealing with. I love fey mischief, historical eras, and books that are 1,000 pages plus. There were plenty of entertaining scenes, and the magic itself was beautiful. The prose is good, and the story is full of great ideas. However, even after coming to the halfway point of the story, I didn't feel a particular connection to either Mr. Norrell or Jonathan Strange. I'm sure there will be commenters who say that it gets better in the second half, and I know that lots of people love this book, but it's hard for me to stay invested in a story if I'm not invested in the people driving it. Worse, I don't think the characters themselves necessarily lacked development or distinct personalities, but it was the style of the prose, which seemed to intentionally place a wall between me and what was happening in the story. Written almost like an historical account, there was an implicit distance within the book itself which kept me at arm's length from everyone. 
This is probably a matter of personal taste, as I get the impression that Susanna Clark, despite the length of her story, is very intentional about what she writes, but it didn't work for me. I need to be close to the characters, whether we're dealing with an epic fantasy or a romanticy, a first person or a third person, and I need to care. I want to know their fears, their backgrounds, their flaws and their passions. Moreover, I want to hear their inner thoughts and experience their emotions. And if your inner emotions are telling you that you'd love more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. The second issue I have is not getting the point of a story. I don't need every book to have a defined theme or powerful message, but I like to have a vague idea of what it all means. This point becomes more important if a book has already failed to engage me on another level. If a story lacks great characterization or a solid plot, I'm going to scrutinize it for other positives. For my part, I love James Cameron's Avatar films. They don't have the most original characters or plots, but if there's one area where the movies excel, it's in their themes. Through them, I've been confronted with certain issues and had my own reactions and thoughts in response. From the second film, I took away an important lesson. The ocean is beautiful and we should respect what we have before it's too late. Long story short, if a narrative has nothing else going for it, it should at least serve some purpose. Most of the time, I don't need a big moral or a life lesson, especially if the book has intriguing characters or a fantastic world, but there should be some takeaway, even if it's something basic like good triumphs over evil or love comes in many shapes and sizes. If I'm halfway through your book, and I can't understand why it exists, that's a problem. Even a basic YA romance makes sense to me because I know that book's purpose, to make me laugh, to put me at ease, and relieve me with some mindless entertainment. If your story is neither entertaining or educational, I'm going to lose interest. The third issue I have is when the predictions I make are better than what actually happens in the book. To be fair, this happens in books I love, and I blame my inner writer for this. Even in my favorite series, I'm continually imagining what ifs and picturing all the twists I'd implement if the story was mine. I am relieved this feeling by coming up with my own stories and integrating ideas into my own work. I mean, am I the only person who wanted a certain almost love triangle in the Stormlight Archives to go further, if just because of all the ways the magic could have been used to say nothing of the drama? Ultimately, it bothers me if a writer teases an intriguing possibility and then drops it. Obviously, I love the Stormlight Archives. This is my only nitpick, and it's one that arises from my personal taste. I've read too much romanticy and I love a messy relationship. But still, I sigh over the possibilities that were abandoned. If a certain alter ego had planted a kiss on a certain unsuspecting man who wasn't her counterpart's fiance, point is, if you tease something or if I predict a really exciting plot twist based on what you've given me, I want to see it happen. No writer will fulfill this 100%. Even our favorite writer ever, Brandon Sando, couldn't satisfy my personal craving for magic-fueled adultery and using your powers in lieu of a computer to date with a fake identity. But I digress. It becomes a problem when the whole book, rather than a subplot, makes me feel this way. If everything I come up with is better than what the writer comes up with, it can be so disappointing, more so if I can see the potential the story had. I'm fine if my predictions are wrong, because the writer usually comes up with something better. But if I'm sitting through the book, rewriting it in my head, there's cause for concern. 
Mind you, if I love a story's raw ideas and would like to explore similar concepts using all those predictions I made, I can just go and write it. At least if you're a writer, such a failed story can still serve as great inspiration. Now, excuse me while I go write a story about an engaged woman who changes her appearance to date different people. The fourth issue which can make me lose interest in a book is if it doesn't excel in at least one area. I don't need every book to be a literary masterpiece. I don't need every book to be Lord of the Rings or Way of Kings, though a girl can dream. Instead, I need a book to be entertaining and to have solid characters. More than that, I need it to shine in at least one area. In most books, even ones which weren't my cup of tea or were outside my genre, I'm able to find something I appreciated. Whether that's the gorgeous prose, the powerful themes, the clever dialogue, or an engaging cast of side characters, there's typically something. Twilight isn't the best written series in the world, but it has elements I personally appreciate, including fun world building and a slower pace. Meyer, if nothing else, knows how to create an entertaining world. As for writers like Cassandra Clare or Sarah J. Mass, they know how to make me swoon. Even with her romances being clean, Cassandra Clare is my favorite writer, at least when it comes to how she handles the romance. Because every forbidden kiss and guilty feeling is a gut punch. There are other parts of Clare's writing I'm not as keen on, but I can identify where she excels and appreciate her for it. If a book is good all around though, but not remarkable in at least one area, whether that's in the drama, the romance, the world building, or even the sheer entertainment value, it can be hard to stick around. And this, again, is the problem I had with Mr. Norrell and Jonathan Strange, because I felt like it was good at all these things, but didn't lean into one of them. Before I could become obsessed with the magic system, we'd be dealing with fairies. And before I could get excited about what trouble the fairies were up to, the book swung away to deal with the war. There were so many great ideas, but I wanted more from at least one of them. I wanted something to stand out as an obvious focal point, be that a plot point or something in the writing that blew me away. And that didn't happen for me. Last but not least, we have what I call the genre swap. I'm all for genre bending and genre blending. I've read the books of Anne Rice, and I enjoyed Stephen King's Dark Tower series. I love books that color outside the lines. That said, I like to have clear expectations going in. If a book sells itself as a fantasy or a gothic thriller, then that's what I expect to get. If the writer of a paranormal novel I've been enjoying suddenly announces two-thirds in that the book isn't fantasy at all, but that everything was just a ploy, I'm going to be disappointed. Because I signed up for vampires, and you're giving me politics and wars and other shit I don't care about. If you haven't guessed already, I am referring to a specific book, namely Bram Stoker's Lady of the Shroud. I very nearly DNF'd this book. The only reason I pushed through it, it was because of how close to the finish line I was. It felt silly to abandon a book with only 100 pages left, and my Goodreads count was at stake. Still, those last pages were a slog, and I, like many others on Goodreads, gave the book three stars. A rarity for me, as most books I read at least earn four. This is a shame, because I loved the first two-thirds of the novel. While I wasn't expecting Dracula, the book sold itself on being another vampire tale. So when I found out, spoiler alert, that the eerie Lady in the Shroud was just an ordinary woman faking her ailment for political reasons, I was so disappointed. The book seemed to be building up to this big mystery, and finding out the mystery was that she wasn't a vampire at all took the winds out of my sails. 
On learning this twist, I very nearly DNF'd right there. Obviously, with this mystery solved, all of the paranormal elements I'd loved in the first two thirds disappeared to be replaced by the woman becoming a damsel in distress and the male lead waging a dry ass war to save some foreign people. With the book abruptly switching from a gothic horror to a political adventure sci-fi thing that wasn't even that well done, I was not impressed. If these changes had occurred earlier in the book, I would have DNF'd for sure. Changing your genre so completely is guaranteed to alienate readers. I'm fine if someone wants to write something off the wall, like horror romance, but if an axe-wielding maniac shows up at the honeymoon with no foreshadowing and no indication in the marketing that the story shifts, I don't want to read anymore because whatever I signed up for, I still signed up for something specific and I expect the story to deliver that. Thankfully, it's rare that I DNF a book as more often than not, I can find something in a story which speaks to me, whether that's a great character, an incredible theme, or a plot, if predictable, that's at least entertaining. For readers who DNF often, the problem can be exacerbated by trying to read so much, and if DNFing is a problem for you, it might be your best interest to read less, as I highlight in the video on the left, where I go over the problems with reading 100 books in a year. Thank you for watching and happy reading.